Hey, it is Tuesday. I am Laura Van Arndonk Baugh. This is To Write and Have Written. Welcome. And uh, yeah, thanks for bearing with me while I sort out how to unmute my microphone like an adult. Okay, Grace, thanks for resubscribing. 10 months, but longer than that, she says. Okay, I'm not even gonna pretend I know the answer, but I'm doing just, just trust you. I believe my first stream was in July, the end of July of 2020, I think. So uh, so that, that should solidly put you at like 13 months, I think, right? I don't know, something. But thanks, anyway, love having you here. Okay. Yeah, so um, we got stuff going on. Let me get my, where did I leave my notes? So first point of interest tonight is, uh, today's my cover reveal day, and I did warn you that I was gonna do that here on the stream. So let's go ahead and make that happen right now. And, ta-da, look, cover, isn't it pretty? So much fire. Yeah, so uh, this is the Kin and Kind. This is number four in the Shard of Elan series, uh, coming later this year, but today we get to look at the shiny, shiny, fiery fire. So, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to share that. Boop, 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 boop. Available at all of your fa favorite retailers in pre-order. And I also have, um, actually, I should probably drop that giveaway here. Give me one second. Uh, I have a giveaway going on as well. You can tell I planned real hard today. Yeah, did not even have that available, to, ready to go. One second. We'll just quietly sing to ourselves while uh, while I get things open. Okay, here we go. This is gonna be the giveaway. I'll drop this into the chat. So if you have not read the series yet, this is the easy way to get the first three books, or if you would like me to deliver those books to a friend of yours uh, to do this as well. And this is not like the big launch uh, thing. This is just for the cover reveal, so it's pretty chill, but you can have a good time. So, okay, there you go. And you know, as long as I'm here, just throw in, there's the pre-order link right here. Yeah, so now everything is thrown in the chat because I can, yay, <laughs> all right. Does that topic still say Evernote? It shouldn't because it says, let's talk about pacing and fiction on mine. Um, let me go check that. <laughs> Um, that'd be kind of funny if it did not update across the board because today we are talking about pacing. Uh oh, let me see if I can log in. Oh, wow. This is, this is me. I uh, just killing it today with, with all the organization. Yeah. For some reason, Twitch doesn't like me logging in on this machine. I don't understand that because I can do it elsewhere. Um, but not on this machine that I actually use to stream. Let me see if I can check on mobile real quick. Kin and kind in kindergarten. <laughs> yes. Okay. It does still say Evernote. I don't know why it's saying Evernote. Let me see if I can update it here on my handy dandy mobile app. Let's find out. Um, yeah. It, okay. Twitch is not even acknowledging that I'm live right now. This is exciting. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about pacing in fiction. Okay, now we get to see if, please tell me if that updates on Twitch or if we're still doing Evernote. If anybody has any Evernote recap questions, we can take those at this time. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I mean, we could, I guess. So, um, okay. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. Hi, Shy. Welcome. Back. Okay. Let's get some notes up. What are we going to do? We actually are, hopefully, as it says now, uh, going to talk about pacing. And uh, this is definitely going to be a bit of an interactive uh, thing. I positively want your questions and comments as we go through here. Uh, I have some notes, but, um, but I, I didn't present like, like I didn't prepare like an entire, uh, presentation with my slide deck and everything on this one, uh, because I just got asked for this yesterday actually. So it's 
been come together pretty quickly. Uh, but that's okay because uh, I definitely, definitely want to get topics and give people what they're what they're interesting for. Um, oh, good, it fixed the title. Hooray! And thank you, Shy. Thank you for helping to share my cover today. I appreciate that. Oh, I can probably take that down now. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, so this coming week. Uh, is Gen Con, and I'm going to have an author table at Gen Con for the first time. And I'm excited about that. I also have no idea what it's going to be like because Gen Con this year is very, very different from normal. So uh, this could be fantastic. This could be a complete disaster. You'll find out next week. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and I'll give you the update on that. But whatever it is, I know that this year is not going to be a, you know, really great predictor for other years in the future uh, just because this year is so different so we'll find out uh, it'll be fun I got lots of uh, lots of cool things but expect me to be posting you know on social media and such from there uh, and all of that and then next week not only will I tell you how Gen Con went very very briefly but uh, we are going to have an audiobook uh, topic next week an audiobook theme I guess uh, and uh, uh, Liz Mori who did, did the Songweavers Vow and is doing the Shard of Elan books for me. And their partner, Tim Alexander, are going to be with me next week to talk about uh, all, oh, all things audiobook. So, oh, hey, Sable Aradia is raiding. Welcome, raiders. We are being boarded. Everybody take cover. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, we are being boarded by space elves. It is uh, the best and uh, most terrifying of, of experiences. So, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Raiders. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so yeah, so next week, if you have any questions about audiobooks, uh, everything from how do, I, how do I know if I need a professional or can I do it myself? If I decide I need a professional, how do I go about auditioning to get the right match? All of these things. Um, I, you know, we've got a whole slew of things we're going to be talking about for that. So, okay. All right, <laughs> let's let's jump in um, and do some chat about pacing. Uh, and and again, I'm just going to start with some fairly uh, fairly broad strokes, and then we can start to narrow in uh, when we get things. So, hey, thanks for the follow. Welcome. Okay. So pacing is uh, put very simply the art of making your fiction not boring. <laughs> and and it, there's, there's a little bit more to it than that, but but frequently that's that's probably the most common pacing related complaint is the story's boring, nothing's happening. You can also get into trouble going the opposite direction. There's too much happening too quickly, and that's why that's why pacing is an art form, right? So uh, okay. <laughs> best description of pacing. It's like, come on, that's come up. That's a straight up description of pacing. Uh, so you can see this. Sometimes it's easier to discuss in movies because, um, because books you tend to pick up, set down, and you might read the same book for, you know, days or weeks at a time. Um, but movies tend to be very packaged and you're going to get through this typically in one sitting, uh, you know, in just a couple of hours. And so sometimes you can pick out pacing issues a little bit more easily in movies. Uh, and so you, you can tell when you're sitting in a film and you're just like, okay, stuff is happening on the screen, but, but nothing's happening. There's just people moving around and talking, but nothing's happening. And, and that's, that's a pacing issue. Uh, and so when you feel like you're not engaged and you feel like you're bored, and sometimes that can be characterization. I'm not, not talking about I'm not engaged because nothing interesting is on the screen. I'm talking about these people just keep packing for a trip, but they have yet to leave. <laughs> and then we get on the trip and they're still on this train and days have gone, gone by. I mean, I don't mean days in the film. I mean, real time. Like I am still sitting, I'm out of popcorn and I can't summon the energy to move. Okay. Um, and what it is is things are talking, you know, things are talking, uh, people are talking, things are happening, but the story is not being advanced. I don't care how many discussions we have on this train until, until something happens that's relevant to the plot, nothing is happening in the story. Okay. So that is, uh, that's what we're looking at uh, here with pacing and it's such an easy trap. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about why uh, later I think there's some things that we, we set ourselves up for um, in the way we consume media that then make it easier for us to get into trouble with pacing when we're 
making our own media. Uh, but so the two, the two things that you want to avoid are too slow or too fast. So there's a sweet spot right in the middle. Okay. Um, and I just described too slow. The opposite is just as damaging to your story. If things are happening too quickly, everything, everything is at a breakneck pace all the time. Uh, you're going to, you're going to run into a couple of problems. One is it can just feel just honestly, it's funny. It's ridiculous. This is fine. If you're doing humor, less fine. If you think you're doing a thriller or family drama or, <laughs> or something. Um, and I'm thinking of, uh, something and I honestly don't even remember the name of it because it made so little impression on me, but it was supposed to be a, a spy, a spy thriller or something at, at and, and the guy, you know, jumps out of a plane and he lands in the car and he does the car chase and he flips the car and the car explodes and he rolls out of the car but lands on a motorcycle and now he's doing this and then they jumps a canal and then he's over here and, and he's in a boat and all of this and and we don't we don't care. There's never a recovery period. There's never a point where I can really just stop and assess like what are the stakes? What are you been fighting for? It just kept piling on so extreme so fast. It just Honestly, we were just laughing at it <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure that's not what the creator intended. So, uh, so that's what we want to uh, avoid. You know, I don't want, I don't want my reader laughing at my drama. Right? Um, so if you're breakneck pace all the time, it's exhausting for your reader. Think of it as just like adrenal overload. Oh, you never get a break. So you're going to disengage a little bit just as a self-protecting mechanism. Um, and because there is no contrast, okay, we don't, we never get the rev up and then the, and then the power and then the slow and then the rev up and the power and the slow, because we never get that. It's just a straight line all the way across. Well, this is just, now it's just a straight line all the way across. It's, there's no texture. There's no, uh, buildup. There's no tension. Okay. So sometimes you can feel like I'm going to pack a ton of stuff in here and that'll, that'll make my pacing really fast and that'll make my story really engaging and you can actually work against yourself that way. Oh, <laughs> okay, Shire and Fox. The last book I read, I was about to swear at it. It's so slow and then poof and then done. Uh, yeah, and yes, that's, you know, th these are your two extremes is, is, is super slow, uh, you know, things are, you know, people are talking, people are moving around, but nothing is happening that's relevant to the story or just way too freaking much I'm overwhelmed, I'm exhausted, I'm burned out, or I find it funny. So, all right. Um, so frequently you'll see this represented graphically as somewhat something of a roller coaster. So I'm gonna try to do my my graphic representation here. Um, you know, we've got your, your inciting incident and your rising action, and then you're building to your climax, and then you've got your denouement or your resolution or whatever we wanna call this here. Um, and of course, it's never just that clean, right? <laughs> like it's never going to be like that. We, we want it to be a little bit more jaggedy. Uh, so I've got my, 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 my entrance here and my inciting incident. And then I've got rising, falling, rising, falling, rising, fall, rise, fall, 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 rise, fall. <laughs> okay. And then our denouement is happening over here. Um, that's going to be like the best clip if anybody wants to grab that in. <laughs> just, just, there's my highlight for the day. Um, and so as you're putting this, as you're, as you're putting this story together, you want to build in these moments where the reader gets to catch their breath, where the reader gets to actually incorporate, um, and think about what just happened. So, um, so yeah, the, the ninja just broke in and they stole the secret formula and, uh, you know, and uh, whatever it's just, it just happened. And I, now I need a moment for my protagonist to really comprehend what that means. Who's going to get that secret formula now? What are the new stakes we've, we've changed from, we have to keep the formula safe to now we have to keep the formula. Now we have to get the formula before, you know, they put it in the drinking water, you know, whatever. And, um, and so we need some time to really integrate what just happened and adjust to these new stakes. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, what you, what you want is that every scene is going to, you know, you, one of the pieces of advice that gets handed around a lot is every scene needs to either advance the story or reveal character. 
This is true. Okay, this is true. I'm actually going to up that a little bit and I'm gonna say both. Both is good. Both. Why not both, <laughs> okay? We can do both. Um, and uh, so that's, a lot of the times we can reveal character by how our character's reacting to what just happened in the story. So the plot advances, I see my character's reaction, that tells me who my character is. Excuse me one second. Hey, puppy, that's not yours to chew on. Yes, may I have that back? Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> thanks. So, um, yeah, quite a, quite a lot of business cards and ribbons that have just been liberated uh, and for, for a dog who is sad that she is not going to Gen Con and does not get to decorate her badge. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I have no idea where I was. We were advancing story. So, uh, you know, something happens in the story that advances the plot. Um, you know, we've just raised the stakes or we have just changed what I thought was the conflict is now this other conflict or something like that. How my character reacts and adjusts to that, what my see my character do, that's going to reveal character. I should have both happening at all times. What my character chooses to do, which reveals his character, now influences the story. So that's also advancing the plot. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Seen in sequel, yes, as Kate says. <laughs> Sounds like me with my kittens. Don't chew on that little plastic goblin. Yes. Yeah, usually we're pretty good, but today, uh, today those, those had to die. Okay, because each scene is doing at least one, hopefully two things, your scenes are not going to be dull. Now, this is what was way easier to say than to do. And especially if you are a discovery writer, hi. My name is Laura, okay? Um, especially if you're a discovery writer, also frequently called a pantser, but meaning somebody who does not sit down and plot everything out to the nth degree. A lot of times we find out what happens in a story because we're doodling around on the keyboard and a story appears, okay? So, uh, you know, a lot of times we have to do a little bit of cleanup afterwards because I had to noodle around a little bit to find out what my character was going to do that was going to advance to the next scene. Uh, so. This is one of those things that sometimes feels like it's easier for plotters than it does for pantsers. That doesn't mean that you should try to force yourself into something that doesn't work for you. Uh, and as, as I've said at other times, sometimes things that look easier for plotters actually aren't, or they're deceptively easy, and then there's more work later. And sometimes pantsers have it easier. And so just whatever. Um, Okay, I, I used to pants, can't imagine ever going back now, but I remember the euphoria of it. Yeah, it's a trip, it's so much fun, especially if you're doing something like um, like NaNoWriMo, where you know there's a word count and a deadline, and you're just like, I'm going to keep putting words on the screen until they form into sentences, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yes, and planters, planters as, as Shy Red Fox mentions, um, that's a little bit more of where I live now. I'm, I'm naturally a pantser, but as, you know, for efficiency's sake, mm. I have learned to make a few bullet points as I go. Now, frequently, those bullet points get yeeted out the nearest window as I once I get in and I actually figure out who my characters are and what they're doing. Hey, Indomiel, um, how about you not? Come here. Hop up there. Go. Hop up. Nope. Okay, yeah, I stole your squeaky toy and it's hidden somewhere and you'll never find it again until later. Okay. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, a total pantser here. My characters laugh at my bullet points and then take off running in the other direction. Sometimes we just use bullet points to give them a place to definitely ignore. So now we've at least headed them off into that, that way. Yes, that can happen. Um, so, okay. Anyway, where was I going? Um, so we need those moments of kind of retracting, you know, condensing, like you're going to, you know, flex the muscle and let it loosen and all of these things. We have to do have that in order to have that contrast in the story because our story needs texture. Our story can't just be one horizontal line, right? Um, so you get these, you, you, you're going to need these scenes that are going to feel a little bit like filler. They're not filler. 
filler is something else. Filler is something we can cut and it does not harm the story in any way. We can't cut these scenes or we lose the texture and the pacing of the story. So um, I'm going to say it's not filler, it's grout. <laughs> it's holding it together. <laughs> I just made that up. Um, oh, hey, am I still streaming? Everything just went dark. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, I think I'm still on. That's really exciting. Anyway, so we have to have a sense of the stakes. So our filler, our scenes, are, which are not really filler, but they're grout. Um, hey, can you hush, please? Nobody wants to hear your sadness. Um, a lot of times those scenes, those, those grout scenes, uh, those are gonna give us a sense of the stakes. So let's say, uh, I'm totally making up this story as we go. The ninja broke into the basement laboratory and they've now stolen the secret formula. And oh no, I chased after them on the motorcycle and big drama, but I couldn't catch them um, because you know they actually were cooperating with the pirates and they got out of the pirate ship and they left. Nobody saw the ninjas and the, and the pirates cooperating. So now our hero goes home and he is sad and his four-year-old daughter brings him this you know little paper uh, flip book that she's made you know, here that made this for your birthday daddy and to celebrate your great experiment and all of these things. And he knows that this thing that has been stolen is particularly harmful to children. And if they get it into the water supply, his four-year-old daughter is going to be at risk. Ah, so we get this sweet family scene, but it's also giving us a better idea of what's actually at stake here. What really is our conflict? What does he stand to lose? So, um, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> there we, um, if anybody wants to take this and turn it into something, have a great time, the ninja and the, and the water supplies. Um, so, because we can't just have a sense of stakes of, oh no, we have to save the world. I mean, the world is nice, but the world is also fairly impersonal, right? Um, and, you know, as we've, as we've seen, people are not really good about committing to save the world. <laughs> They're really not. Uh, but if you say, oh, can you save your child? Can you save your sibling? Can you save your best friend? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get in for that. Yeah, we'll get in for that. So, um, so yeah, we need those scenes. They're not, if we take those out, we lose the sense of pacing, we lose the sense of texture. So they are not filler scenes. They're just the recovery scenes. So I hope that, that makes sense. Okay, and I'm glad Kate likes my grout, <laughs> grout metaphor. Great, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a new trend. Um, okay, sometimes people, uh, sometimes writers make decisions that are pretty uh, dumb and they put ensemble casts in really big plots and then they have to wrap them up. Hi, can you tell I'm finishing a series right now? Um, and so you might have a lot of different plots all happening in the same book. And you've got a number of different subplots that you're gonna to have to pull together and you have a number of different uh, stories with different timelines. And, uh, and if it sounds like I'm working out my personal issues right now, yes, yes, that's exactly what's happening. Uh, so uh, what, uh, what you've got here, you've got you, you know, your multiple story timelines that are all happening and throughout the story you've been able to hop from timeline a to timeline b to timeline c this is a great way to handle pacing by the way if you have multiple things just uh when you when you need a recovery scene you know this one's getting too intense come over here and <laughs> spend a little time over here and then we can come back and pick up the intense one again right um but i need all of those timelines and plots and subplots and everything to wrap up together or going back to my, my visual roller coaster here, we've got all this rising action, but it's not gonna fall together. It's going to pitch off, pitch off. Oh, and this one, oh, oh if we actually finished this one up here and then we have to need to come back and mention again that we finished it so people don't forget, you know, and it gets very messy. So uh, this is the thing where you just really need to spend a lot of, uh, maybe not beforehand if you're not a plotter, don't, don't try to plot this if that's not natural, okay? Like go ahead and write out the story. Then afterwards, sit down and make sure that your timelines actually work out so that within reason, okay, it doesn't have to be all on the same page, but if you've got four different storylines going on, you're going to get all four of them to hit their peak, that climax, at approximately the same time, okay? There can be a little bit of fudge, but you don't want that to be like 50 chapters worth of fudge, right? You want these to be relatively close together. And uh, that's going to do several things. One, it's going to keep 
uh, you from having, you know, climax at one point and denouement in uh, an, another story, but happening at the same time, which is going to feel completely discombobulated. Um, and it's going to keep you from jumping too quickly between things. Um, Age of Ultron, uh, you know, if that was a film that did not feel as cohesive as many others within that same franchise. Uh, and part of it was it was doing way too much jumping around to too many different things. So, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm also have, I am also help, trying to wrap up a series and ha 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 help. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a little support group after the stream. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly, exactly where I am. Yeah, I was shy, would also never have too many characters. Yes, I've, I've been cutting some characters to, uh, to, to reduce that and it's not, it's not fun. Yeah. Um, and ah, Sarah James, welcome. Uh, I actually prefer to discover the characters as I go. Yes, I, I do. I'm all right. No shade to the people that this works for. I do not do character profiles. I do not do character interviews. Uh, people lie in interviews. You ask somebody who they are, they will totally lie to you. You throw them in the deep water and they'll tell you whether or not they can swim. Okay. <laughs> like that's, that's how I do all of my character, uh, discovery is putting them into plot scenarios and seeing what happens. So, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So anyway, I've got all these multiple plot lines going together when I'm trying to wrap them all up and I'm forcing them all to come into that, um, that peak, you know, uh, climax resolution, uh, point at the same time. What happens when you take a lot of traffic and you condense it into a narrow space, everything just gets so much more intense. That would, that'll happen with the story as well. So it will actually boost your climax a little bit, uh, just by making sure that your timing, uh, that all of your timelines match yeah. up. So, okay. Um, and okay, great. Like we got a whole club going on in the chat of people who also don't do character profiles. Hey guys, that's legit. I know like sometimes you go out into like the greater writing community world and, and everybody's got their favorite personality type testing and their favorite character interview sheets and all of this stuff. And, and, and honestly, like uh, there are people that it definitely works for. I have friends who do that and it's, mm. and it's an essential part of their process and more power to them. Um, but for a lot of people, it's a great way to procrastinate. <laughs> so if that's not actually working for you, then just don't do it. Go put, go throw your characters into a situation and see what they do. Ah, now we know who they are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, yeah. And, and then again, BC Brown says, says, book says here, uh, I always have character profiles and let the plot grow from the character profiles. Right. So there are multiple ways to do this. Don't feel like you get, need to get stuck into one approach. Um, even if it seems like everybody in this particular Facebook group is doing it still doesn't mean it's the only way. <laughs> that said, there are good practices to follow. Um, but you can certainly t experiment a bit with tactics. So, okay. Um, and then I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about how we get a feel for this. Like many things that are art as much as science, um, you, uh, this, you're, you're going to get a feel for pacing as you spend more time with it. And this is one where you just really need to be cautious about what you're taking in to get that feel for pacing, uh, because you're going to adapt this from the other stories that you are absorbing. And I mean that in fiction, in novels, I mean that in TV shows and in movies, you know, whatever, uh, uh, whatever media you're taking in, um, you know, so, so pick good things is where I'm going with this. Uh, and I, I don't in any way mean to sound elitist with this. And I don't in any, any, any way mean to say you can't read things that you enjoy. That's not where I'm going just to be clear, but I have seen some phenomena where, um, and I'm just be really, really clear. I'm in an awful lot of writing communities, uh, small and large, and I have been in them for a while, like many years, uh, and literally tens of thousands of people that I will see by, by hopping from community to community. Uh, so I'm not picking on anybody in particular here. I'm just saying that sometimes I, I get a chance to see things in, in large group in bulk. Uh, and there was, 
for a while, I was seeing a group of people say, oh, you know, we are indie authors, so we are only going to read other small indie authors. Uh, and and that's, those are the only books we're going to buy because the, the, that's what we want to support. Okay, great. I'm all for supporting small indie authors. Like, that is not the problem. But I am exclusively going to read only stories by people who have done much less, you know, in a, on a career, from a career standpoint. And I watched as that community shifted a little bit and they tended to select different covers. They tended to, you know, when they would post snippets of their writing, their writing was a little less polished. And it was not because indie authors are inherently bad at things. That is absolutely not. It's because they were deliberately excluding <laughs> the more successful uh, from their pool, from their media pool. Um, and and I just that, that's something that we just need to be cautious about. I, uh, and guys, I have a secret weakness, like one of my, it's not really secret, like this is a common birthday present kind of thing for me. Um, well, people will buy, you know, the, the worst of the 1950s B, C, D level sci-fi films, okay? Um, you know, from Hell It Came is awesome. It's, you know, about a killer tree. You know, all of this stuff, these are great. Um, so I'm not telling you not to enjoy things that aren't A++ level. What I'm saying is make sure you're also taking in goods. For every time you watch from Hell It Came, also watch Casablanca. Okay, that's where I'm going. And I am so behind on the chat. Hey, Indomio, can you stop that? Thank you. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. My dog is super bored right now. Um, let me go find out what the heck is going on in the chat because there's a lot of it. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, okay, so... Uh, uh, Sarah and Shai were talking about making character profiles as you go. Great, that's um, really good, um, really good way to stay consistent. You know, continuity matters. Grace is saying you get your trad pub briefs from the library. Hey, that's that's fine. <laughs> Please support your local libraries. Yeah, my my point was not that you should not read trad pub or you should not read indie. My point was that you just need to make sure that you're still taking in good stuff, so that you're you're what you are taking in and normalizing is of high quality. So that's what you're also going to produce. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if I was saying that well, but I was very distracted by my dog chewing on things. So hold on. Um, yeah. Okay. You love the pup. Yeah. She would love to, uh, she's being a little sulky and doesn't want to get on her chair. I'll see if she would like to come up here. Hey, Indomia, you want to hop up in your chair? Yeah. People might like to see you. And then if you're on the chair, then you're not like destroying things. Oh, you're so bored. Life is hard. She lost a toy under the furniture and I'm not getting it for her, so everything's sad. <laughs> my dog's my dog is definitely being a little naughty right now. Um, yeah, she's she's super bored. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm just gonna throw out a, a, a plug and I get absolutely no kickback, but um, for those of you who are talking about, you know, character profiles and continuity and series Bibles and world Bibles and all of that, um, and somebody just asked me today about, you know, build, making a world Bible, um, and World Anvil is great for that, worldanvil.com. They have a free tier membership that will do pretty much everything you need, and then you can get up and get, um, get crazy. So, yeah. Hey, can you hop up here? Indomiel? Indomiel, hop up. No, oh my gosh, so much sulk. Okay, we're gonna... We're gonna turn this off because she is definitely, definitely not not participating. <laughs> yes, World Anvil is amazing. Yes, and its community is really awesome, and they have great challenges. And so there we go. I get no uh, no kickback for that. Okay. Um, yeah. So what I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and say what I was trying to say again, but more clearly now that nothing is being destroyed uh, on the floor in front of me. Um, if you because you and you are going to normalize the stories you take in and the better quality stuff you take in the better your own concepts of craft are going to be make sure that you're getting a broad spectrum and again i'm not saying you know you have to be elitist and you can't like you know terrible films or, or whatever have a good time 
What I'm saying is make sure you're also taking in the best stuff so that you're training. Um, not everything is going to be analytical. When, when I'm writing, I am not thinking about how many adverbs have I used in the sentence, okay? I'm, not, I'm thinking about what's the tone, what's the feel, what am I getting out of it? It's very, very subjective. It's very, very qualitative rather than quantitative while I'm in that writing state. And that is gonna be based entirely upon what I have internalized about how story works. So that's what I'm trying to say is make sure that you're taking in really good quality story so that you can do better quality story because that's how your brain has learned to story. So there we go. Okay. Um, so anyway, okay. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you want to learn from the best. You might also enjoy things that are not at the top of the heap as Sarah says. And, and absolutely like we all get to have our guilty pleasures. Okay. <laughs> that is, just make sure that you're also teaching your brain the good parts of story. All right. Um, you know, you as an author, you are what you eat. So make sure, you know, we can all have our, uh, our, our sugary snacks at some times, but I do need to eat some veggies too. Okay. Um, so with things that are, might be equally, equally unhelpful in pacing, um, a really, really common one. And uh, I'm actually, I'm just gonna, just gonna jump right. A really, really common one would be the, what I'm gonna call the family fluff scene. And it doesn't have to be literally family, but it's probably gonna be what is known in the fanfic community as fluff. Um, and this is, you know, the domestic fluff, people being happy together, people, um, you know, just hanging out and having a picnic or explaining. And, and I got a manuscript that I was looking over from somebody and um, this person gave me roughly 100 pages uh, of manuscript and I gave it back and I said, okay, somewhere between 40 and 60 of, these, 60 of these pages need to be cut because they're just domestic happiness, okay? Which is not to say domestic happiness is bad. Actually, I'm very much in favor of it, okay? But as far as what is happening in the story, that's not plot, okay? This is the kind of thing that shows up a lot in fanfic because people want that for the characters and they're not getting in the story, but there's a reason they're not getting in this original story. It's because it's not actually moving the plot, okay? So it's fine to just have a little drabble scene later. That's great, but it can't be in the story because it will actually affect how that plot moves. So, um, yeah, so I hope that makes sense. Um, so, you know, when you've got everybody just sitting around talking about how their day went and feeling really good. Okay, that works when the ninja have just stolen the secret formula and now we've got that domestic scene to contrast with the, you know, the, the scary part and we're, you, it's now creating new stakes. That's where that scene will work. If that's the point of that scene is just to be happy at home, then that scene's not gonna advance the plot, okay? On the flip side, too much battle way too much battle. You see this a lot in movies, okay? Oh, look, more shaky cam, more blowing stuff up, okay? And I, and I no longer care, right? Um, you can probably pull out several films that could fall into this category from recent years. And in you know, my, maybe you wanna say, oh, okay, but it's, it can't be boring because stuff is happening because stuff is blowing up. And that's clearly what a certain number of you know, film directors are thinking. Um, but in fact, I don't care because we're not increasing the tension. We've just got the steady straight line of, look, more things exploding, okay? Hope that makes sense. Um, okay. Um, Oh no, the chat says, did we just lose Laura? I, I am still here, I hope. <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you, this has been the rockiest night, like as far as, as, as uh, distractions and streams and stuff go. Okay, um, all right, I hope, I don't know. I'm, I'm, if I disappeared, I was recording locally. Sorry, I'll have you back. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so anyway, you can have scenes that, you know, feel slow or scenes that feel super drama, but they're actually just artificial excitement. They're not actually moving the plot forward. So, oh no, more battle scenes, 
So there we go. Okay. Um, however, I'm going to throw out, um, you can also have critical family fluff scenes. And, and I'm experiencing that right now as I'm wrapping up um, Guilt, Kin, and Kind, which I just showed you. Um, there are scenes that have to be calm, happy family life kind of scenes in there, you know, where people are just sitting and still being happy. Those are critical to the plot, plot, okay? Because at this point now, four books in, those are negative space. So I need those, okay? Um, so I don't know, tell me if that makes sense. Throw it in the chat, tell me if that makes sense. I'm gonna go rescue another thing from my dog. Hey, you brat, and Domeo, come here. What are you doing? Can you not eat that? So somebody years and years ago gave us an Eevee. Here we go. I don't even know where this came from. I really don't. It just appeared in my house. Um, I think my husband brought it home from a con, but I know he didn't, I don't know where it came from. Uh, I think it showed up in his office at a convention or something like that. Anyway, um, now it just showed up in my dog's mouth. What is with you? Why, why are you sad? Why are you bored? Your life is horrible. Yes, she's really sulky because last night I wouldn't let her eat whatever was in the tree. <laughs> okay, critical family fluff should be today's raid call. Yes, there we go. Um, so anyway, I hope that I hope that makes sense with um, with what I was saying about you know it, if I'd started with family fluff, we don't have any reason to care. Like that's nice, but it's not contrast. Okay, but if we have you know these huge amazing stakes. And then we have the family fluff to balance that and to provide a, you know, to put that, those stakes in perspective, um, then it's actually advancing your story. So, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So are there questions related to plot and pacing? Um, <laughs> this, this entire stream was an example of disjointed pacing. <laughs> Yes, so maybe uh, in, in the future I will do one with fewer interruptions, but at least at minimum we can say it was very textured. So there we go. Yeah, Doggo wants all the attentions today, and this is uh, way more, you know, usually she's pretty good about uh, sitting in her little throne and uh, and just supervising here because she's got her, her, her little, uh, oh, where is it? This guy on something there we go she's got her little dog thrown that she's usually pretty good at hanging out there but not today that is not what we're doing now so okay um anyway are there questions for pacing <laughs> i am gonna be uh teaching at rocky mountain fiction writers um which is going to be a live conference and then there will also be a virtual version available online. So if you would like to check that out, I'm going to be, that's in Denver. Uh, and I'm gonna be talking about, what am I gonna be talking about there? Um, to be doing, uh, when, is it, when is it good enough, I think. And also the sagging middle of my career. <laughs> we always talk about the sagging middle, you know, in our, in our story arcs. Uh, so this is the sagging middle of my career. Um, and yeah, so, okay. Uh, <laughs> the doggo interruptions are gold. Hey, good, because you're getting them, you're getting them all tonight, yeah. What a, what a fuzzy little brat. You're so mad because your toy is under the furniture. You know why your toy is under the furniture? Because you put it there. Yeah, life is real hard sometimes. Isn't it terrible? Okay, all right. Um, so guys, I'm going to wrap up, oh. Um, <laughs> Can you hear her growling at the furniture? So sad. Um, I am going to check. Elena is streaming tonight. Uh, are you doing magnets tonight, Elena? What are you doing? Or more painting? Is it painting tonight? Let's see if Elena's in the chat and can't answer that question. Um, next week, again, remember, is uh, with yeah. our audiobooks. We will have two audiobook narrators and producers hanging out with us answering questions so please come bring all your audio questions uh for that and then uh, <laughs> sorry we're ignoring the tantrum 
Um, and we are, uh, I've got Gen Con later this week, so I will do a super brief recap on that, but I don't want to get in the way of the audio, so we might do more on that afterwards. So, uh, Gato interruptions are always welcome. There's like a cat tax. Nobody has a Doberman tax. Yes. Um, so, okay, so Grace, uh, Grace says, I never planned my pacing, but it does sort of happen by itself. Hopefully a lifetime of reading good stuff can make it intuitive. Yes, that is, that is exactly it. I think I, I firmly believe the more good craft that you read, the easier it becomes to produce that because that's what your brain is starting to intuit as this is the way story works, right? And I should point out too that pacing does vary culturally. So if you... Uh, I was actually talking about this with, with uh, some friends the other day. And, um, and Ella, Elena's doing hand sewing and Gen Con prep, but it was a short oh. stream. Okay, great. Um, Elena was in on this conversation the, the other day when we were talking about, um, you know, if you have always been raised on, you know, Western, you know, North American kind of media, and then you watch maybe a C drama um, where, you know, you've got a very Chinese story structure, and those are going to feel different. Hey, you're a brat. I'm having a serious conversation over here. Yeah, serious conversation. Um, and those are gonna feel different and and that's normal, okay? Um, because they are different story structures and the pacing is pacing is very cultural. Um, and so you know, we are totally immersed in our Aristotle in three act structure and you might hop over and get a four act structure over there or something like that. And all, so just be aware of what audience are you writing for and that can influence some of your decisions. So, um, okay. And yeah, yeah, guys, I'm, yeah, I think we're, I think our stream streams running a little bit of delay. I don't have, it, it looks, all the numbers look good at my end, but from the chat, I can tell that we got a bit of, bit of delay. So I apologize. I don't actually know what's going on, but, um, if you want to go ahead and hop over to, you know what, I'm just going to put the raid up. We'll do that. All right, so we're counting down. We're gonna raid Elena and her stream will not be up right away, but you wait and she will show up. And then I will see you guys next Tuesday, same time, same place with less Doberman, all right? Everybody take care, have an awesome week. I'll see you next time, bye.